Let's stay in Parliament now, and of course, another big discussion that has been ongoing is the nomination of various uh, individuals to the East African Legislative Assembly. There was the issue uh, of the nomination by the Wiper Democratic Movement Kenya of Kalonzo Musioka's son uh, to the Eala uh, Parliament. Let's now listen in to that discussion currently happening on the floor of the House of the National Assembly. Of its nominees are women. I, I, I thought it should, the rule should even have said uh, one third of, of its nominees should be from either gender, not necessarily women. women, but that is how the rules as it is now says. Mr. Speaker, the committee observed that under Rule 6, sub clause 1 of the rules, a party could sub submit a number of nominees ranging from the minimum number it is entitled to under the rules, and up to three times uh, the number of that entitlement. Because the rule just say any number not exceeding three, three times. So even if you say um, you are entitled to one slot, you can, you can submit one name, because that is what the rule says. So long as it is not, it is not more than three, three times. But, but, but I, I, I just move along with me. I will explain w w what is the hiccups here and there. So then the committee observed that this rule provided discretion to the parties as to the number of nominees that they will dominate, so long as the number did not exceed the maximum number uh, of the entitlement. However, Mr. Speaker, this is uh, what I want members to, to understand. Honorable Kaluma, you, I want your attention. It says, however, the committee took note of the decision of the East African Court of Justice in reference case number one of 20 or 2006 by Professor Peter Nyangnyong and others, and the Attorney General and others. Actually, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, I have the court ruling here, if you, if you see those who went to the, to the court, they can even see the name of the president and the deputy president, uh, and, and Norna Bobilo Kero as the fourth in Ravinas. There are so many, and most of them are members of this house. So, in which the court emphasized that rules made pursuant to the treaty should not infringe the provision of Article 50, in so far as that, artic that of, of, as that article conferred the powers which primary purpose is to provide for the election of nine members of the assembly by the national assembly of each party in a state. The court found that that purpose was defeated by the provision of Rule 7 of the then rules for election of Kenya's members of, Ye of Yela, which provides for a fictitious election in lieu of a real election. That is the court ruling. The court therefore held that the National Assembly of Kenya had not undertaken an election within the meaning of Article 50 of the treaty. So therefore, Mr. Speaker, because members should have this court ruling, we, we, we deliberated as members of the committee and we, we were in agreement that um, uh, rules or even laws that, are, that, that, that contravene court rulings is, is just as good as the court had ruled that that, that rule is null, null and void. Mr. Speaker, it's also noteworthy that at the time um, Rule 7 provided that upon being certified, this is, this is how that, that is how we did, upon being certified that the requirement for Rule 6 have been complied with, the House Business Committee shall cause the names of the nine nominees of the parties to be tabled before the National Assembly
and such nominees shall be deemed to have been elected as members of the East African uh, uh, Legislative Assembly in accordance with Article 50 of, of the treaty. Mr. Speaker, I'm just finishing. Now, the committee, therefore, resolved that in light of Article 50, subclause 1 of the treaty, and Rule 6, subclause 2 of the rules, and noting the decision of the East African Court of Justice in reference number 1 of 2006, it was important to ensure that the number of nominees from each of the parties enable members of parliament of Kenya to conduct an election as required, and that in that election, members had an opportunity to ensure there is fair representation uh, of the various shade of opinions, there is regional balance, gender, and other special interest group. Consequently, Mr. Speaker, the committee resolved that Court Coalition, which had submitted the names of five nominees, submit the names of the total 12 of nominees so as to enable compliance with the treaty. Just finishing, Mr. Speaker. The committee further noted that for the future, there was needed to amend Rule 6.1. Of course, since the court had already said it is not in tandem with Article, Article 50 of the treaty, to require parties to submit three times the number of the entitlement. What I mean here, Mr. Speaker, is that we should amend, because I want to fully agree with the parties and, and that they made no mistake in submitting the minimum, because the rule says any number not exceeding three times. So, so even um, the, the, the minimum, which is one, that's not exceeding does not exceed three times. That was not a mistake of the parties at all. Actually, we, wanted it, we, we want to own up as the joint committee that it was an oversight. It was an oversight by my committee, Mr. Speaker, because we should have seen that before the, the names were submitted. We should have already read the, the court ruling uh, that almost that nullified that clause 1-6. And therefore, we should have advised the political parties well in advance that they should, they should submit uh, three times the number of their slots of their entitlement. So what we even want to amend the rules for future is we remove the, the word any number and just make it for clarity, make it very clear that every political party shall uh, uh, submit three times their entitlement. So it wasn't a mistake of the parties, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the recommendation of the committee are as follows. The committee recommends that the Houses of Parliament resolve as follows. One, the entitled, that the entitlements to nomination or to nominate persons for Yela, election to Yela are as follows. Jubilee Coalition, five nominees. Code Coalition, four nominees. And the Independent, uh, nil. Number two, that for the future, I think I've explained that the rules be amended so as to make clear and unequivocal provision on the matter of requirement for the nomination and election of independent candidate in the light of Article 85 and 99 subclause 1C of the Constitution. Recommendation number three is that in line with the decision of the East African Court of Justice in reference number one of 2006, that's by Professor Peter Nyong Nyong and others, and the Attorney General and others, the court coalition which had submitted the names of five nominees, submit the names of a total of 12 of nominees, that, that is an additional seven, and, and this, is, this is the other um, issue the committee made, Mr. Speaker, these seven nominees should come from the list of the 41 applicants. Uh, submitted to the leaders of the coalition by the letter dated 5th May 2017 from the presiding officers. Because, Mr. Speaker, there was, um, there, there was a consideration. Do we, do we open it up for others to apply? Then we, we thought we, we will open a Pandorax box. We already have a list of 41 from court, and then they picked five. They can pick the other seven from the, that list of, of 41. 
Number four, Mr. Speaker, that for future, uh, rule 6, one of the, of the rules be amended to require parties to submit three times the number of persons they are entitled to nominate under the rules. And number five, and this, Mr. Speaker, comes to you, is that the presiding officers appoint a new nomination day to receive and process further nomination from the code coalition. You, you remember, Mr. Speaker, we have timelines that we are operating on. So we, 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 we thought as a committee, uh, because of this, um, the, 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 uh, this hiccup that has really stopped our work, you provide the, the, the timeline because it, we cannot now beat using um, the current scenario. And number six, that on the conclusion of the further nomination, the presiding officers forward the list of the further nominees of the code coalition to the joint committee for consideration in accordance with Rule 13. And finally, uh, uh, that the speakers of both houses of parliament make a determination pass one to Rule 25, extending the timelines required under the rules in order to enable the process processes recommended to be undertaken and further extending the latest deadline for the holding of an election to a date not later than 4th June 2017. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, as I said earlier, this, this report is not about discussing any nominee. We haven't reached that. We will do that as a committee. Then we will bring a report now on the, all the nominees, and then you can discuss and approve or dis disapprove as required. It is just for those, uh, for, for, for clarity of, of the law, Mr. Speaker. And with those few remarks, I want to move and request the Honorable Fulawa Munyinyi to second. Honorable Atanas Misiko Wafula Wamunyini. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to second this uh, motion before the House on the election of uh, members of the East African Legislative Assembly. Mr. Speaker, the motion before the House is merely bringing to the attention of the House uh, that in line with our mandate, which provides for review of the procedure and rules of election, on the basis of the review, make some recommendations to the House. And Mr. Speaker, without risking to say what uh, the mover has said, I would like to stress that this exercise we are undertaking as a committee is such a, an important exercise that uh, we need to ensure that we have followed all the rules, the procedures, and to ensure that uh, the exercise is above board. Mr. Speaker, we did not look at the eligibility of members, neither did we look at uh, the numbers to be brought or those to be voted on because we have not reached that stage. Where we are now, and I think it's important for each member to know that simply nominations have not taken place. But we need to make corrections in some areas to ensure that when nominations take place, we are in compliance, in compliance with the relevant articles of the statute, particularly Article 50, sub Article 1 of the Treaty and Rule 6, 2 of the East African Legislative Assembly election of members of the Assembly Rules 2017. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to stress one important point, which is, um, which is the reference that we made on the case that was in court at uh, Arusha, Mr. Speaker. The committee observed that um, in the ruling of the matter, the court was, un was very clear as to what kind of election should take place and whether members, I mean, coalition should bring strictly the number entitled or 
an election should be undertaken from the number. I know that some members have argued, Mr. Speaker, that even where you are an opposed, an election takes place. But here, the court was very clear. And even you look at the words used, Mr. Speaker, that uh, quoting the ruling once more is that conferred power which primary purpose is to provide for the election of nine members of the assembly by the national assembly of each partner state. The court found that the purpose was uh, defeated by provisions of rule seven of the then rules of the election of Kenya, members of the IALA, which provides for a fictitious, fictitious election in lieu of a real election. Mr. Speaker, and I think it is important to note that, and members should look at this also. I wish to invite members to look at that ruling because he, the, the, the court made it very clear that the election of members of the East African Community uh, Legislative Assembly must be a real election and not a fictitious election. That, I think, is the basis. I do agree with the, the submission of members names proposed but mr speaker this proposal is in line with article 6 1 which refers to any number it doesn't say you times three but the court ruled that it has to be an election that is why we have brought this to the before the house so that uh, if if the house agrees with the committee and adopts this report the presiding officers will have to start afresh and coalitions will be given time to nominate, to make new nominees presented before the House so that now the process by the committee will take place with the new timelines which will be determined by yourself, Mr. Speaker. I also have noted, Mr. Speaker, that uh, I think sometimes our, our, our clerks do not get things right. I'm looking at issues raised. Among the issues given as of having been raised, Mr. Speaker, at number three, on regional balance, which I agree featured before the committee, but there was nothing like what is written in this report as issue raised, Mr. Speaker. At regional balance, the committee noted that the code coalition did not take into account regional balance and as such should for forward a further nominations list with additional seven members observing regional balance. Mr. Speaker, there was no such a thing, and I think this should be deleted, Mr. Speaker. Because what we agreed was that both coalitions must take this into account. And it was not even the court coalition. For information, even the Jubilee coalition left out a large region, portion of this country, from the nominees given. But we are not there yet to look at the regional balance and what was used in submitting the names, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also remind colleagues that um, the East African Legislative Assembly is such a, an important arm, particularly when it comes to issues of uh, integration and ensuring that um, we are, as East Africans are moving on and there is continuity on matters which have been passed in the past. I wish to request that uh, Coalitions should look at um, members who are still eligible, particularly those who have served in IALA, for example, and um, even the Pan-African Parliament. Those who are eligible should be given another chance to ensure that we do not, at every time we are electing members of the assembly, you elect new, new members. That doesn't ensure continuity, and new members will have to be trained to learn to go through the process of the East African Legislative Assembly. So I wish, I wish to recommend, uh, this is from my own observation, that uh, it is important to consider you know, re-election of eligible members because they're entitled two terms, and if one has served only one term and he has done well, he should be given a chance to do a second term. This applies to both the Code and Jubilee Coalition, Mr. Speaker. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, I wish to now second the motion, Mr. Speaker.